So thanks for taking the time, guys. I know we're, we're running a little long. I wanted to put this really complex architecture diagram together for you because I know it can be hard to follow. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to take an existing AWS cluster of, of Cumulo, and I'm kind of being a little jokey here, and we're going to replicate that to a brand new cluster in Google Cloud Platform. Um, I worked at Google for a number of years, so I'm actually a lot more comfortable in the Google UI than I am in the AWS UI, but you guys will see what we're, what we're working with here. So I wanted to launch a new hybrid Cumulo cluster. We're gonna do it uh, with your name, so CFD-2. We're gonna launch it in US Central 1A. Everybody's got their favorite region, that's mine. Um, we're gonna take all the defaults. I'm not gonna protect it from accidental deletion because I wanna be able to delete it when I'm done. And I'm gonna tell it to go. And it's really that easy. We can launch in any region for, for Google Cloud Platform. We can launch in any region for AWS. Um, we use all industry standard uh, launch technologies. So we use Deployment Manager in Google. You can also use Terraform from HashiCorp. There's a bunch of other automation tools that we can do um, so that customers can really have this be work you know, integrated into any workflow that they might have. Um, when I was at Google, I used to have a lot of customers that wanted to move data around either based on the automation tools that they had in different, in different uh, cloud platforms. So they might want to use AWS because it's got a great, I don't know, IoT offering, and they might want to use Google because it's got a great uh, image detection offering or something like this. And the whole point of this is that we give customers the ability to move their data to the platform that they need it to to be in. Uh, one of the things that's fun about Google is that they don't automatically assign external IP addresses to new instances. And so I had created this T Kressler CFD cloud uh, field day so that we can add it to the CFD2 cluster that I just created, right? So now I've got an external IP address and I can talk to my cluster that way. And take a look and show you guys real quickly inside of Compute Engine what our VM instances look like, and we've got a bunch because you know this is um, this is a Cumulo um, uh, you know test account, right? So this is my CFD two cluster that I just built for you guys in US Central One A, and it doesn't seem like the external IP address has been assigned to it yet, but we'll give it a second. One of the things that we can take a look at is we can look at each individual instance that we have, right? And so this is the details. They're all the same, right? This happens to be CFD2-1, uh, one, node 1. Um, here's the external IP address that we just assigned to it. Here's the disks. So we've got five SSDs attached to this instance. There's five SSDs attached to every instance. These are the persistent disks that are behind it, right? This is all standard GCP hardware, nothing fancy, nothing really kind of crazy. And the only thing I would like to highlight here is as well, when you deploy with our uh, automated tools out of the marketplace, which is what I just did, we'll auto generate you a password um, so that you can have access to it. So I, like any good SE, I cheated a little bit. This is the external IP address that we assigned. And so we're just gonna go to the external IP address that we had created as a part of that process, right? And I'm gonna bounce back over here. It usually takes a second because we're still firing things up and I'm gonna grab our password. And hopefully, you know, the, we pray to the demo gods and sacrifice, uh, you know, something, some sort of uh, treat that this will let us go in and we'll be into our cluster. While we're waiting for that to take its uh, sweet time while it's spun up, I wanted to show the analytics real time um, from what we have in our in our offering, right? So this happens to be a cluster that we have on-prem um, and I've just happened to log into it just because it's a cluster that we have that has our actual production workloads on it. Um, so we're actually able to see real time IOPS, throughput, um, latency that we're cluster seeing and then also all of the, the, dis, the distribution on megabytes per second, different client activity that we would be able to talk to, um, and capacity trends, right? So we can see where the directory changes are going. And, you know, I've been in storage for 20 years of my career, right? The, sometimes I look at this and I go, this should be really easy. Um, but the fact of the matter is it's not. When you look at AWS and GCP's native offerings that might offer NFS or SMB in the cloud, they don't give you any of these kinds of analytics. And even when you look at the current on-prem offerings, like from our competition, they don't give you these analytics and they certainly don't give it to you in such an easy to use, easy to see kind of uh, in interface. So our cluster, whoop, our cluster didn't come up right away. Let's give it another shot and see if it, if it wants to do it. 
Um, we'll go back here. Um, we also have the ability to get into more details. We can see how used the cluster is, how much free time, free space we have, and the hardware that we have. I have an AWS cluster that's also here. It just doesn't have any work on it. Um, I threw some data on it last night in preparation for this, and I had a replication job that was running. Um, but we can see the hardware that's involved in this cluster as well. See the Cumulo hardware in AWS today. Um, and then give ourselves complete access to the APIs and the toolkits. So any API that a customer, any technology, anything that you would want to do to a Cumulo cluster, cluster management, cluster creation, cluster share creation, joining Active Directory, all the things that you would want to do with this storage can all be done through our API calls or it can all be done through our uh, command line tool or it can all be done through the GUI, right? We just have complete and total control over, over what that might be. Let me take a look and make sure I'm actually going to the right external IP address. Maybe something got messed up. 35.223.019. Yep, wrong IP address. Here we go. Copy this. Go to the right one. It doesn't want to let you not go to that other IP. <laughs> oh, here we go. This yeah. is unsafe. Now we log in as admin. And then we go grab the password again real quick. We're demoing for our life here. Okay, so brand new Cumulo cluster running on Google Cloud hardware. We can see we've got about 12 terabytes usable space. And this is brand new, right? I literally just spun it up, so we don't have anything on it. Um, any customer that would want to take advantage of it would want to replicate some data over to it. So I have about just a small amount of data in an image directory here on my AWS cluster. We're going to replicate it to our cluster that is in uh, GCP. We're going to go back and make sure that we have the exact right IP address because um you know smart smart money says take the right ip address here we go we'll do it from here 35 and so we'll go here we'll replicate it to the right ip address and we'll set up the replication relationship there's really nothing to do here right continuous replication blackout windows, there's a, things, there's a bunch of things that we can configure. And now it just says we need to accept that replication relationship um, from the AWS cluster. So let's go ahead and take a look at the details, authorize the replication, it'll create the directory. And now all of a sudden we're replicating data from our AWS cluster to our GCP cluster um, on a continuous basis, right? So the use case that I could see for this is if you had a customer that said, or if you had a work, a, a business unit that said, hey, I've got a bunch of data that we put up in AWS, but we know that Google's got a better solution for managing X, or we know that Google's cheaper, or we know that mm -hmm. Google has uh, compute in a region that is more favorable to us than AWS. And we wanna just make sure that that data gets moved over, um, we can do it. The best part about this, right, is that the user interface that the customer will see, the, the configuration technology, the, you know, the APIs that you would use to call on it, the connectivity to Active Directory for authentication and authorization, that can all be done um, in a Terraform script and in a management tool that, that is unified across on-prem, in AWS, and in GCP to give your customers access to everything that they might need to have access to. Um, any questions at this point? No, that made it pretty clear. <laughs> good. And I had integration questions, but you answered them right at the very end. So good job. Excellent. <laughs> hey, look at that. I did the thing, right? Like I'm really kind of <laughs> proud of myself. I did a demo. I did it live. Something didn't work right at the beginning, but we managed to wake our way through it and we replicated some data. Um, and then, so I... Like I didn't, I didn't build the demo for this part. Um, I do actually have a demo for it, but I didn't build it for today. Um, the shift piece, like the shift component of this, is really powerful, and it, it, 
it, it speaks to me here in the Midwest. So when I worked for Google here in the Midwest, one of the challenges we had was, you know, data scientists for customers in the Midwest are hard to come by. They're expensive resources and they really want to do data science work, not a hey, uh, build this compute cluster work or manage this storage work, right? So um, a lot of the automated tooling that's coming out from the cloud providers is fantastic, whether it's around machine learning or analytics or artificial intelligence, whatever that might be. You bring your data to the, to the cloud provider and then do whatever you need to do with it, right? So uh, if that if the cloud provider wants that data in a file format because it wants to use NFS or SMB or something like that to get access to it, then great. Build a cluster in GCP, build a cluster in AWS, replicate the data up and, and do the work. If they want that data to be in an object store, which is increasingly what the cloud providers want, right? Because it's really inexpensive for them and it's a really easy way for them to do it. Then just use our shift technology, replicate a directory or two's worth of data up into the object store that you need access to, and then do the analytics, right? It gets the smart people in your organization that are really expensive doing analytics work and doing high value work as opposed to managing, moving data around and doing the kind of the, the what do we call it, the toil um, of moving data and managing all of those kinds of things.